Hey, welcome back again, and as promised, we have uh, another video on machines, and so let's talk about the machine called a bicycle. So I've uh, drawn this bicycle here, and um, it's such a neat machine because um, it's what we call a compound machine, but in a bicycle, what we, what we end up doing is we transfer a force, so we're going to put a force down on this pedal right here, right? And that is going to then transfer to causing a torque on this gear, right? And that gear has teeth, and so those teeth are going to cause a force on that chain, right, in that direction. And that force on that chain, so we got this force here that causes a torque here, that causes a force here, that then... Uh, transfers to a force on the teeth right here, right, on this uh, smaller gear, right, so let's say right there, and that's going to cause a torque here, right, which is going to transfer to a force, um, which is going to turn this uh, this bigger wheel here, right, so that's going to cause uh, this to turn right here, and then that's going to essentially, that tire is going to put a force on the ground that way, right? And the ground then, according to Newton's third law, is going to put a force back equal to that force that was put on the ground. And so when the ground puts the force back on equal to the bicycle, it pushes the ground essentially, then pushes the bicycle forward. And so all you had to do was step on this little thing, and you essentially, through a series of machines, got the ground to push you forward. And there you are moving forward, and then you can sit still on this thing and continually put force on this lever right here. Or, I'm sorry, this is a axle and wheel, but cause torque on, on this particular pedal and, uh, and move. All right, so um, so let's just think about um, analyzing this um, this bicycle um, in terms of some of these things that we've been learning about with work. Um, so let's say that uh, when you push on this, it causes 155 newton force on the chain this way. Um, let's say that that causes your wheel to to turn uh, 14 centimeters, so um, 14 centimeter turn, um, and so that's obviously going to make you move some. Um, and uh, so so let's find out um, all we can about this. Let's figure out what's the mechanical advantage here. Um, and, uh, and let's say we have two gears. We have a uh, four centimeter gear and then an eight centimeter gear. And one of the things I want to show is, is how is it that these different gears on a bicycle um, make it so that um, so that it is is different amounts of forces that you put on the pedal, right? So um, you, you'll probably notice that when you're riding a bicycle, if you're going uphill and you're going in places where um, where the bike needs to move more slowly because, or the bike does move more slowly, where your force uh, needs to um, to be easier in a sense, um, you'll notice that you're you're gonna put your your chain up on these bigger wheels in the back, and then when you start going faster and faster, you move them to the smaller ones. So hopefully you'll be able to see um, as we go through why that is. So let's say that my my total wheel radius is 35.6, and my two gears are four and eight centimeters. Okay. Um, let's say that I also a bicycle is 95% efficient because we talked about how um, real machines are not 100% efficient, right? Um, there's, there's some energy that's lost to heat, um, and, uh, and so then it just goes off into, uh, into the environment around and doesn't get then transferred into the work. Um, so not all the force you put in comes out, but um, but bicycles are pretty efficient. So let's go with with 95 on this. All right. Um, so let's let's see that we can figure out. So let let's go back here. Um, so we've got the um, let, let's first of all calculate the um, IMA. Now remember what we talked about earlier was that the ideal mechanical advantage, the IMA, is basically the ratio of um, of the distances, right? The distances. Well, because this is a uh, gear, a wheel axle 
kind of machine, the ratio is basically instead of uh, distances, we're going to look at radiuses. With with uh, wheel and axle, we just compare radiuses of one to the other. All right. So um, so in in analyzing this wheel back here, we're going to turn this little wheel, and then that is going to turn this big wheel. So here's my IMA. So my my force exerted is going to be on the little wheel, right? Um, and so my my radius of the little wheel is what I want to put here. So I have in my IMA equation, I have my distance exerted divided by uh, my distance resisted. So I have four centimeters, and my resistance distance, or what comes out, is on the big wheel, and that's 35.6 centimeters. Okay, so we multiply that all out and we get 0.112 for my IMA. Now, um, how are we going to figure out the mechanical advantage? Um, because uh, we only have, um, we have this one force right here. Um, so, uh, we're you know, we don't have two out of three variables, but we did find out before um, that efficiency, we have the efficiency of the machine. The efficiency equals the mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage. And remembering from last, uh, the last video, the ideal com mechanical advantage compares the distances. That's what we have here. And the mechanical advantage compares the forces, right? So if we know that this is 95, so let's say we have 95% uh, efficiency is going to equal some mechanical advantage divided by 0.112, which is our ideal mechanical advantage, times 100. So divide by 100, multiply by 0.112, and we get our mechanical advantage uh, to equal 0.10. Six. Let's just go with that. Point one zero six. Um, so, so there's our mechanical advantage, and there's our ideal mechanical advantage, right? Um, and so, let's uh, let's go ahead then and uh, and figure out my forces, right? Because um, we know that mechanical advantage compares forces. So mechanical advantage is going to compare the force that comes out, the force resisted. And so we know that we have 155 Newton force that we're putting into it because we said that the chain is going to pull on this little gear with a 159 Newton force. And so we want to see the force that, that comes out on this wheel. And that's essentially going to be the force that pushes against the ground here, right? So we know that the force we exert is 155 Newtons. And so what we're looking for is the force uh, resisted. So we know that our mechanical advantage is, I'm going to go ahead and write that in here, is 0 0.106. Okay, so if I multiply that times that, I'm going to find that my force of resistance equals 16.5 newtons. Okay, so what have we done? Well, we have a big force over here, little distance, which is going to transfer to a big distance and little force, right? Um, so uh, so why do we want to do that? Well, the reason that we want to do that is because when we're going faster, remember we use the smaller gears when we're going faster, we're going faster, we want this, this wheel to turn as much as possible. So we want all of our forces right here to actually come out on the other side as more distance, right? Because once we're going faster, we don't need a whole lot of force to get us going even faster. So what we want is more and more and more distance. The more distance we have, um, the more we can uh, push this on the, uh, on the ground and therefore um, propel us even faster at faster speeds. Um, so that's kind of the reason that we, that we do that. Um, let's keep analyzing this a little bit more. Um, let's look at the um, ideal mechanical advantage in terms of um, the distance, uh, the distance uh, resisted here versus the the distance exerted. So if this if this uh, big wheel turns 14 centimeters, well, how much of a turn do I have to do on this little one right here, right? So I know that ideal mechanical advantage uh, equals the distance 
exerted divided by the um, the distance resisted. Okay, so I know that my ideal mechanical advantage is 0.112. I already calculated that out. And so my distance exerted is what I need to figure out. And I know that I have a 14 centimeter turn on my resistance distance. So I go ahead and figure that out. And so my distance exerted equals 1.6 centimeters. Okay. So I only have to turn this little guy 1.6 centimeters, right? So basically that's the amount that this chain moves. So this chain is going to move 1.6 centimeters, and that's going to cause this big wheel. So this little guy only has to move 1.6 centimeters. And that's going to cause this big guy to move 14 centimeters, right? Um, so let's, let's think about um, what would happen then if we doubled, if we switched up to, um, let's say we switched up to this other gear. So let's say that, um, that we need to go a little bit slower. It's gotten so that um, we're going up a hill, right? And you might notice that when you're going up a hill, you'll switch to gears, and you have to turn this thing a whole bunch more, right, to get this going. Because what you're doing is you're changing the distance that you exert because when you change the distance you exert and make that greater, it lessens the amount of force that you have to put on to get the same effect out the other side. So, um, so that's what we should see. We should see that when we switch to this bigger gear on the back, um, we have a, the, the chain essentially moves further. We learned that with the little one, it moves 1.6 centimeters in this situation. Well, if I double that gear, you can see that what I'm going to end up having here is 8 centimeters, right, divided by 35.6. And so that's essentially just going to double this. So if I double that, let's just kind of put this up here. So my IMA here for my, um, my wheel and axle is going to be 0.224. Right. If I and then when I double that, it's also going to, of course, double my um, my mechanical advantage. So my mechanical advantage is going to be point two. Uh, let's say point two one two. Right. Or is that point two one two? Yeah. So point two one two. And uh, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, and do some calculations here. Let's kind of figure out and do what we did before. So if my IMA is now 0.224, right, um, what's my distance of my chain going to move if my bottom wheel moves 14 centimeters, right? So, um, oops, sorry, I put 214, should have been point. Two one two. Um, well, let's see. Calculate that out. It's going to move like three point one uh, two centimeters. Okay. Um, so look at that. So we talked about how um, one thing you'll notice when you're riding a bike is that when you switch to gears that are um, for uh, like going uphill and such, you can move this around a whole lot more, and it doesn't. Uh, move the wheel as much. Well, here you see what's happening now to move this 14 centimeters, right? You Now you can move the chain 3.12 centimeters. So you pretty much doubled the amount of chain movement because you doubled the gear um, radius right here. And, uh, and what does it do to the force? Um, so let's go ahead and figure this out with mechanical advantage. We know that the mechanical advantage now is... Um, did I, uh, I did the wrong one right there. Sorry, that should have been 0.224. Sorry about that. Anyway, it's going to be about that. Um, so these are about the same anyhow. So sorry about that little mistake there. So if I am going to use a mechanical advantage, I can figure out forces. So 0.212 um, and my force resisted is what I want to figure out divided by my force put in, which is 159 or 155 newtons. So my force resisted is going to be somewhere around 33.2. Okay, let's say that. So 33.2 uh, newtons. Okay, so what do we find out uh, before? Um, oh, look at that. Did we even do it? Yep. So 16. 
so so a 16 was my force resisted on on this side and on this side my force of resistance on the other side is 33.2 so this should help you to understand when you're going up a hill you want more output force and less distance when you're going really fast you don't want force, you want that travel to more distance because basically you, this wheel is turning so fast, you want the distance out of this so you can go faster. But when you go on uphill, you want the force and not the distance. So you're going to switch to this higher gear. So hopefully that um, starts to show you a little bit about um, how a bicycle works, how the gears work. This is also how the gears work in a car and uh, why you, when you start off, you can imagine when you start off with your first gear in your transmission, that's going to be a bigger gear, right, that then is going to transfer out to your wheels. And as you go up um, higher and higher multi, um, miles per hour, that uh, wheel or that gear is going to go smaller to transfer out to the wheels so that you essentially get um, the same effect that we analyzed here. And I know this was a little bit scattered and a little bit around, um, all around, but um, kind of showing you some of the ideas about how to use IMA and MA to analyze a machine. And it's a compound machine called a bicycle.